Okay, Algebra 2 people. Um, so I had a couple questions uh, post or I guess mid-test or post for whatever you want to call it. Anyway, I want to go over a couple things with you. Um, so uh, there were some questions regarding um, imaginary numbers. So you have, when you're adding or subtracting imaginary numbers, uh, you need to remember that you have any complex number, which is what these are called, will have both a real component and an imaginary component. So just look at this page and see how they're all set up as the real component, imaginary, real, imaginary, real, imaginary. And that's that A plus BI format uh, that we need to have it in. So what you want to do, like for 58, you just want to distribute that negative. It's like a negative 1. So end up with negative 1 minus 3i plus 7. Or why did I write plus 8 and 8? That's just wrong. Plus 7, plus 7. And then so what you'd want to do is then combine your real components. So you have 7 minus 1 gives you 6. Yeah, I'll just do it again. 6 plus and then negative 3i plus 7i gives you a plus 4i. And so that would be your answer right there. Same thing with addition. Now when you multiply them, uh, you're just going to basically uh, foil. So you end up with negative 6 times, six times negative 1 is negative 6. 6 times negative 8 is i is negative 48i plus 3i plus 24i squared. Now remember, i squared, any i format can be reduced to either, you know, i squared is negative 1. That's really going to be the one you're using. So we have negative 6 minus 45i minus 24. We combine the negative 6 and the negative 24. So we get negative 30 minus 45i. Um... What's going on here? Okay, so for these, what you want to do is if it's just a monomial on the bottom, you just multiply by i over i, and that's going to um, get rid of the i on the bottom because you're going to have an i squared. The i squared is turned to negative 1, so you end up with negative 8i plus 8 over negative 6. Remember, we always want to write that in A plus BI format, so we switch them around and reduce. Okay? Um, with these ones, and we just did these on a test. It was part of our quadratics test, so you should know how to do them. Um, if not, go back, and if this isn't enough, go back and watch the quadratics quiz review. Um, that has a bunch of stuff on imaginary numbers as well. Or complex numbers, I guess, to be as specific as possible. So with this, what we want to do is we want to multiply it by its conjugate. Remember, that's where we take the, um, the same first term and then change the sign of the second term. So when we distribute here, we get 18i plus 15i squared over... And then this turns into 36 plus 30i minus 30i minus 25i squared. Now, why we do this, as you can see, is we now cancel out the 30s. So that i squared up top becomes a negative 1. So we have negative 15 plus 8i. 30s cancel out. So on the bottom, we have uh, that i squared becomes negative 25. Cleo wanted to say hi. So now we have plus 25. 36 plus 25 is 61. So we have negative 15 over 61. Why did I write 16? Uh, oh, that's right, because when I did this, it was like way late at night. And I just did it again. 61. Okay. More examples. So... Uh, the other question was range and domain. Uh, domain is the uh, x values. 
range is the y values. Um, so on questions like this, you just list out all the x values for domain and list out all the y values for range. But as we get trickier and into um, like this, it says identify the vertex, axis of symmetry, maximum, minimum value, so on and so forth. So let's look at here. So we know that vertex form is a times x minus h squared plus k. So here h equals 2. And notice that there's no k. So that means that it's 0. So my vertex here would be at 2, 0. My axis of symmetry is x equals 2. And it's a minimum. Why is it a minimum? Because we know it opens up. So we would have 4, negative 16, negative 2. And it would go like that would basically be the graph. So notice here. that um, so we're looking for the domain and the range now so the domain here it's what possible x values does this have well the domain is all real numbers and the range is anything greater or equal to zero because as long as the y because notice there's nothing down here in negative y land um, so same thing on the next problem. What am I doing? 4, negative 10. I'm doing 23. Cool. 23, my vertex is 4, negative 10. So again, it is an upside down. So we have my vert. So x equals 4. This is my axis of symmetry. At 4, negative 10 is my vertex. And we know that it opens down because... Well, A is negative. So my max is 4, negative 10. Right? Now the domain, again, is all real numbers because we can put any X in there. But we have to have our range, our Y values, have to be from negative infinity to negative 10. And that's it. So you can also put X is less than or equal to negative 10 for the range. Okay. And I'm sorry I didn't go over that with you. One more thing. Um, and that is word problems, which we all love. So hold on just a second. So the problem on the test is similar to number 18 here. Now we did, contrary to popular belief, we actually did problems like this. Um, it was just a while back. It's from chapter 2 or 3, I think. Anyway. This is how it works. So a kayaker can paddle 12 miles in two hours, moving with river current. Paddling at the same pace, the trip back takes four hours. Assume that the river current is constant. Find out what the kayaker's speed would be in still water. So we have two variables here. So we're going to go x equals the kayaker speed. And y would be the water speed. So we know as a general rule that distance equals rate times time. Okay, so what I'm going to do is my rate and my time. So we know, okay, so we know that 12... Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to say that when we take the kayaker speed plus the speed of the water and we multiply that by two hours, we go 12 miles. When we take the kayaker speed and subtract the water speed, multiply that by four hours, we go 12 miles. 
So our equations are 2x plus 2y equals 12, and 4x minus 4y equals 12. So if I were you, I'd multiply this top one by 2, and I'm going to move over to the left-hand side so I have some room. So I'd go 2x plus 2y equals 12. And, or, sorry, I forgot to multiply. So remember when we multiply, we multiply the whole thing by 2. So we end up with 4x plus 4y equals 48. And 4x minus 4y equals 12. When we add these together, we get 8x equals... 60, divide both sides by 8, so we get the speed of the kayaker is 7.5, and that's actually all we need. So hopefully, hopefully this helped. Um, if you have any questions, uh, email me. That's where this video came from was an email. So good luck, everybody.